Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Donnie. And I'm Nick. And today we're rambling about deep, sca- deep space for... Do- Can we just restart that one? <laughs> no, no, keep going. <laughs> no, you said you don't like to do more than one take. Deep space photography with Josh Wilson and oh. this Hubble telescope in the back. Yeah, so <laughs> we're hoping that this is coming up. This, can you see the Hubble telescope clearly? I hope it's so. It's the uh, Windsor Hubble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, are you part of the Astronomical Society? Nope. Oh, you're a freelancer, eh? Ooh. Oh, a freelancer, How, yeah. How'd you learn it anyway? Like, Just YouTube. Uh, lots and lots of YouTube watching. And that literally did not help me the first time <laughs> I went out into the field. Because I think out of all <laughs> photography, it's probably the most technically advanced by a long shot, I'd imagine. Like, I can't think yeah, of Yeah, it's else. probably one of the most technically, uh, technically heavy form of photography. Because uh, there's the shooting process you have to get down and then the actual processing that you have to get down Mm. which you know you could have really good photos and then your processing could be garbage and you might end up with um, crappy images yeah because you can't really just take a shot and out of the camera you're like this is it right it's a lot more yeah unless you're doing like wide field milky way shots uh, just on a tripod but it's a whole new world when you get to uh, star trackers and all that yeah, so, so what we do is typically just regular astrophotography. What you do is more deep space. You do some astrophotography, but the deep space is where, like, people have the perception that it is, like, no, it's the, like the Hubble telescopes. And all. That's where those fantastic images are coming from. But you're able to sort of do similar things. And you're, you're shooting at the same sky, right? So yeah. really you're, you're, you are just getting the same images, but you need the equipment. This, you can't do what you do with... Hubble has a few... 100 kilometer advantage. Well, though. yeah, yeah no, no, no atmosphere, no yeah, clouds yeah, ever. Yeah, they've got no light pollution um, to deal with. But yeah, so the the whole process is just different. As in, it's a, where we have said before, we try to not make it equipment heavy. If you're going to do this, this is quite the investment and uh, of time and, and a learning curve, I'd money imagine. and learning. There, there's a huge learning curve, and I'm I still consider myself an amateur. Yet, a lot of the pictures I take are. Uh, like whenever I post them, a lot of people are blown away by them. Oh yeah. But right. to me, I'm just like, eh, <laughs> I probably could do better than that. Uh, but that's like all. Of, I, I don't think anyone's ever 100 percent happy with their shot, no it, matter what you take. Don't get me of. wrong though. Like the first images that I took, though, I was just like, wow, yeah. I, I, I took yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was like, I could still do better. <laughs> that's like I honestly never even knew you could take deep space, like uh, like Orion and all that, or. Orion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised you've changed the name of it all of a sudden, eh? Yeah. And then, uh, but I was surprised you can even do that with like uh, uh, just basically your normal right. DSLR setup. So uh, I tried that one night and it was like I was like pretty blown away. I was like with a, just a seventy to three hundred. I actually got better luck with a seventy three hundred on a crop body than in my full frame with my five hundred. Right. So that was a. Uh, there's a whole science behind that too, right? Because isn't that like micro four thirds on there, or is it, what's uh? Uh, yeah. So the one that's on there right now is a dedicated astrophotography camera where it has a beefy cooler on it, uh, because it, when the te- uh, sensor warms up, more noise is introduced into the image. Mm-hmm. Where a dedicated astro camera has a cooler on it where it'll cool to like negative forty degrees below ambient temperature. That's crazy. And if anyone wants to see what noise looks like. Just uh, go check out our last astrophotography uh, yeah, yeah. video. Yeah, so <laughs> Scroll like 20 yeah. minutes in. So that's uh, that's the like ISOs snowstorm. that were like a million. And it looked like a snowstorm and we were glowing in the dark. <laughs> Hopefully that's not going to happen to this the one. The bugs didn't help though, right? Right. It was just a lot of bugs. It was just yeah. a lot. It was, it was yeah. like really not noisy. It was just a lot of bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the whole system said being dedicated. But you, you, do, you do have all our setups that it's just like your sort of DSLRs and things. Yeah, like, like yeah, um, one of the best lenses to get um, when you just start doing uh, astrophotography with DSLR or mirrorless is the uh, Rokinon or Samyang 135mm lens. It's incredibly sharp. That's a 1.8? Uh, it's an F2. F2? And yeah. That, that, that's a, pr- like when you're talking about it, that's a pretty cheap Set, yeah, I think go, it's right? it, five hundred dollars Canadian yeah. for the lens, uh, and I I have a lot of lenses in my bag, and it is by far the sharpest lens that I really have. Tough. It's always the recommended one too. Okay. I, a lot of the images that I took that I'm sure are going to pop up through here um, were taken with that. Um, even the uh, I did Comet Neowise uh, yeah. 
right behind the Renaissance Center. That's cool. And like the Renaissance Center is just so sharp. Like nice. you can see uh, if somebody was in there, you'd be able to see like somebody in uh, oh, in their yeah. office. Like <laughs> you'd see like different chairs and nice. all that if you That's zoom cool. in. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, 42 megapixels that on my helps. camera yeah. helps too, but. Right. Yeah. Rokion and Samyang, or Sam, Sam, Samyang? Rokion and Samyang. Yeah, they've, they've done Unreal lenses now. Yeah. They're, oh, yeah. Uh, and they're, they're releasing a lot more autofocus lenses. Yeah. Uh, because manual focus isn't for everybody. Right. Yeah. It's a lot more challenging, One of company course. I was so, kind of disappointed with is Loa. Like, oh, yeah. they got some sweet, cool lenses, like that probe lens and stuff like that. Yeah. But they have that ultra-wide, oh, I forgot what it was, a 15 mil F2? Is that it, what it is? I think they have like a 12 f4, maybe a 15 f2 as I well. I think so. And it, but like uh, for my body, it's like 1500 bucks, and it's not weather sealed, and it doesn't have autofocus. So you're paying 1500 bucks for like a manual focus, non weather sealed. The line. glass in there has to be like better be top like, quality <laughs> for. But like for that I don't price. know. But uh, I don't know. That's just a side note. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. That's all we're here to talk about. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's, that's fine. Um, so you're saying about the Renaissance one. So last year we had a couple of decent events. We had the you had your typical events that we have during the year. Yeah. Um, the Perseid meteors and yeah, the, that, that one wasn't uh, the greatest. It, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't yeah. the whole time it wasn't. That's a hard well. one to photograph too, because like you the only way to do it that's like kind of depicts what you're seeing is a time lapse. I think that's a, yeah. Yeah. What what also is actually really cool is. Uh, meteor shower with video yeah like where you yeah. could you could see where Streaking, it starts yeah. and that like it starts flashes and then yeah just disappears yeah. So for the leards one a couple months ago in april i did a video i still haven't had the time yet to uh, go through probably about three four hours <laughs> worth <laughs> of footage nice. i need to find a, an efficient way to kind of like scrub through and just kind of see the changes yeah so it was like the radiant point is usually uh, it's usually what the uh, meteor shower is named uh, named after. Like okay. Leards comes fr uh, the radiant points usually around like I think Lyra or something like that. Um, in December, there's the Orionids, which Orion okay. uh, like right around the Orion constellation. Hmm. That makes sense. It just appears. That's where like the meteors appear to come from. Huh. That makes it a lot easier to spot ass guy too, because you always hear like other people. It's like, oh, look, kind of like southeast, and you're like southeast here, southeast there. It's right. like, oh, uh, that's yeah. all southeast. Yeah. But like Orion, you're like, there it is, like, and it's pinpointed. Yeah, that, that's kinda. like one of the one of the few where, even if it's you're in like a true dark sky site where there's, you just see like billions of stars. Yeah. You could still make out Orion right. or the Big Dipper or something yeah, like true, that. Yeah, true. True. So we were talking about earlier, or maybe a couple days ago there, about like uh, you do a lot of photography out of your driveway in like a city, right? Yeah. So uh, when you get to uh, modified cameras, uh, you can do what's called narrow band imaging, which um, it blocks out basically every wavelength of light except for a small sliver, hmm. which is what most of the uh, nebulas are. There's like three main ones. I think it's like hydrogen alpha oxygen and sulfur or something like that really? um, and you can combine them it kind of gives like false color images where i'm sure you've seen the crazy ones where you know it's just like blue green right. and yeah. red yeah, yeah. like just crazy uh, so do you have, to, like, you have to color correct to yeah so like once you get it onto the computer you can uh, assign one of them to like to a red channel green channel blue channel oh okay that makes because sense on that. camera it comes out as uh, like a monochrome yeah almost like grayscale uh, kind of. yeah grayscale oh. monochrome image hmm. that, that, that's weird that's crazy like is, I, I didn't yeah. even think of that so you're basically so everyone who edits it would edit it slightly different than obviously because yeah like one person might prefer hydrogen alpha to be in the green channel and oxygen to be in the red where most people do a hydrogen alpha in the red, oxygen in the green, or something like that. Right. Okay. Huh. So it's it's just how you want to manipulate your image yeah. and all that. Yeah, that's wild. So huh. uh, that, that's a sense, part of that then really becomes an art form, right? Because it's not it's it's your personal preference rather than being true to exactly what is being seen. In the exactly. Sky, right? yeah. um, that's like almost all night sky photography right. is that way. And that, again, and this is back to a lot of people's perceptions. Um, say they see your photo. And nobody asks any questions. Huge reaction. Oh, this is fantastic. This is great. And then one of us posts a similar image and say, "Oh, well, we done this, and then we added it for an hour, and we show that." Oh, yours is terrible. Like you, you edited that. But yeah. bottom line is Photoshop. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Photoshop. Right? <laughs> bottom line, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you, you cannot. These these images are not gained from a single shot. 
in yeah, a second. You, you can't go yeah. on your cell phone and be like, yeah. Click. Unless you're doing, uh, you know, like a 10 to 20 second exposure with a Milky Way in a foreground before you get Star Trails. Yeah, then you get a pretty good that's, idea. That's what's more, going on. not really true to life because you're even with your naked eye, you you're, can't see yeah. that. Is that. I have had people ask me, uh, like, can I actually see it like that? And it's like, sorry, but no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always disappointing. It's like, yeah. it, it's still like, yeah, I, we get asked that all the time. It's like, does the Milky Way look like that? I'm like, not quite. Not even really like that at all, but. It's still worth it. To, when, when you, you get go to a true, it, a true dark sky, unreal. Yeah. You can you can see like the entire band of yeah, the Milky absolutely. Way, and it's yeah. literally it's, like twinkling stars. Yeah. It's like unreal. And, 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 and uh, it's something I've mentioned before too. Part of that is then, as the photographer, you're wanting to then portray the experience that you had. Yeah. So if you just took it and just left it the way it was, kind of just a single shot and didn't edit the to highlight the the, the band Milky Way. It wouldn't be as impressive, right? And people wouldn't be as wowed. And you're the reason why we're wowed is because we're out there doing it. And then even from the deep sky stuff, the reason why you're wowed is because you're pointing at the, the certain set of stars, and, and then you, you, you've, whenever you get that image, there is some of the things that we've looked at on the back of the camera. You can see a little bit of the detail of these things. But yeah. to, to make them really come to life, you have to edit it. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the power of a raw file is Nuts. insane. Yeah, yeah insane. absolutely. Like there's um, there's an image of Orion uh, with the uh, Orion's belt and Orion's nebula that I'm sure will pop up on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you send it to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I um, totally sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that one, I don't even remember where I was going with this. So. <laughs> hmm. Um where 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 do we, where do we start? <laughs> oh, with the Milky Way on how like uh, different editing yeah. techniques and you have to you have to add to make it look. Yeah, so uh, in the editing, like I was still like fairly newer at editing. This was shot with the uh, Samang 135 millimeter. I only took about 30 minutes worth of exposure time, so I think it was only about like 15 minutes. Sorry, 15 two minute exposures that I took of the. Um, took that part of the sky on a star tracker mm -hmm. and uh, when i got home edited and all that it's like okay this is like the best image i've ever taken yeah. yeah and at the time it wasn't i still love it but learning new processing techniques there's way more uh, information in that shot yeah, right. than what uh, thought was what i thought was available and yeah. it's like oh only half an hour okay like you know that's Sorry, some people put like 30, 40, 80 hours into uh, yeah. into a single right. shot. And then, uh, you know, just in half an hour, there's lots of hidden detail. Yeah. So the guys who do like multiple days or multiple night exposures, so they just like, they obviously set up every night, do it like whatever, say so it's eight hours a night, do eight hour exposure, next night eight hour exposure, kind of the same, the same uh, yeah. galaxy or nebula. Yeah, so, so a lot of times people will um, dedicate, say like, one or two nights to a certain uh, narrow band of it where they might do uh, you know like the red channel on one night spend eight hours on that eight hours on the green channel oh, eight like hours on the crazy. blue channel <laughs> like, <crazy. laughs> like I, I honestly never knew is this involved like yeah. like uh i the, when i first started seeing your photos like i didn't even know it was possible to do like besides like from a satellite right. <laughs> like, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean it literally yeah. looks like it's like it's crazy it is it's wild and it's yeah. and then when you get into looking in some people's images uh, i'm sure uh, you guys have seen like astro backyard yeah yeah, yeah. he lives in saint Catharines, uh very light polluted oh he's from just, canada yeah oh i didn't know that huh yeah he um he's in saint Catharines, and just the stuff he gets is incredible yeah, insane and, 99% of his images are taken from a light polluted backyard. Yeah. He's building a little observatory or something, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah, uh, an cool. observatory in his backyard. Hmm. What's the advantage yeah. of that anyway? Versus, is it basically you're just putting that inside the observatory? Or to be it, honest, I haven't really uh, looked into it that's too much. That's the next step, though. <laughs> it's probably, it's, probably <laughs> it, it's going to be uh, one of the big steps. Wind, wind thing, uh, yeah, movement, right? but, movement, yeah wind, that's it. it blocks wind for sure. Yeah. Um, and then some of them have like big reflex uh, moisture sensors oh, okay. and all that too. So if it starts raining in the middle of the session, it'll just close up the dome. Really? And... <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's, it's, and, uh, and it does block out like a lot of the side lights. Like, yeah. uh, if there is any lighting. Well, again, that's kinda... uh, true. That's where whenever you're shooting deep space, right? You're, you're, you really don't want anything foreground. So if you're taking any amount of light for anything from the, the sides closer, it's going to be a benefit, right? It's going to make a big... 
Yeah, I mean the light, the sky is still uh, still pretty light polluted depending on where you're at. Right. So it's obviously it's a benefit to Darker's go farther better. outside yeah. of the city. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Which is why a lot of time, I mean, my backyard, I have like 10 percent of the sky that I can see. <laughs> yeah, you're saying you go through like it's a little square of trees kind of thing, or yeah, there's like such a small amount of the sky that I can see. So it's just like really I can only image a very like certain time of the year otherwise there's basically nothing in that do part you have of the them nice all sky. like a calendar like oh on a december whatever <laughs> this is this is gonna streak by this little square and then i, I haven't done that yet but <sighs> i'm have you tried there to get the trees a, cut down that's they're all my neighbors trees. <laughs> <laughs> cool. and then uh yours like i remember you have like uh what's it called uh not light reduction filters but there's it? light pollution filters, light pollution filters. So. yeah yeah but those aren't really as effective anymore, though, because uh, LED mo and... most uh, cities have moved to, like, LEDs, where that one blocked out the uh, sodium lights, uh, okay. which were the yellow. Yeah. But the LEDs admit, like, that I think it's strong, and, like, all the red, white, and blue channels, like, yeah, it's all, was, like... Yeah, what you're huh. <laughs> yeah so it's, Doesn't it go uh, off of, like, Calvin? Like, like, like say, like, white lights, like, 5,000K or whatever? Yeah. So, go, okay. Huh. That's pretty wild. Can you... Can you you know how like the greenhouses are super yellow? Does it do all right with that or no? It, it does all right with that. But it's like but, so overpowering. That's like yeah. That's why I usually head out to like Wheatley, Point Pelee area yeah. because it's. Um, if I'm shooting south, um, I'll just get past the greenhouses. Right. It's worth the extra little bit of a drive. True. True. So again, just to reiterate, this is Josh is taking pictures. Pretty much the city of Windsor, uh, and he's still able. So the images that you're seeing coming up on the podcast are. Well, there'll be a few of them from, from in, in, in the city. Uh, Pretty much everything's from Essex County, except for a couple of them. Yeah. So as much as people want to complain about the, the greenhouses, light pollution, and uh, the city lights, and obviously we're surrounded by big cities in Detroit and going south of Toledo and Cleveland and things like that there, wouldn't be Toledo. I wonder, I wonder if all way. the goats are going to be on the... <laughs> That's right. yeah. If you hear any animals, wild animals, we're really in the middle of nowhere yeah. here, and there's a herd. wild, wild sheep, <laughs> wild herd. sheep running around. Um, yeah, so it, it, it is crazy that you know a lot of people say, and we, we we try to promote the Essex Windsor area. Uh, and people say there's nothing to do and you can't do things. We we have plenty of things that we do photography wise, and we're even talking about stuff that where light pollution is an issue, and you're still still able to get fantastic images. So. People don't need to be put off that. They don't need to be saying, yeah, it is nice to go to cottage country and just get the proper dark skies yeah. and see millions of stars. But as far as enjoying them... Well, it's always can. like good to like, kind of do the best with what you got. Right, kind of exactly. Deal, right? Like, no matter what, up there is always better for just about everything. But down here is like... You can see, like you said, he gets unreal yeah. images. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd much rather uh, drive an hour than have to drive like three, four hours yeah, to oh, yeah. go somewhere. Like even if you go on Lake Erie, you still get like some of the Ohio light pollution yeah, right. yeah, yeah. from some of the bigger cities on the other side. But you still get really good images, right. so, yeah. especially for the area. Like, and like deep sky, you're not too worried about yeah. horizon light. Out of, or are you? No, not when I use a. Uh, like the narrowband filters that oh, I have, yeah, like that you can even shoot on like a full moon. Like, oh, it, really? Yeah. Holy, damn. Like, yeah. So I've had a couple of mind blowing moments in this whole podcast. Yeah, that's so good. It is, no, it, it, it is fascinating that yes, we've said it. It's expensive and it's dedicated to that. But if anybody's into that, yeah. But like, clearly, there's a purpose, and it it's it's alleviating problems right. that would exist with DSLRs or mirrorless, right? Yeah, exactly. Like um, so what I was talking about earlier, the image of Orion that I took with Orion's belt, nebula, and yep. all that, uh, that was taken, um, which would be in a Boral class, like four or five uh, for the light pollution okay. with a stock uh, mirrorless camera. Oh, wow. So uh, you can get a mirrorless or DSLR modified it as they remove the uh, part of the IR filter. Okay. Uh, to pick up more of the reds, which is most nebulas uh, and all that are hydrogen alpha. So just removing that infrared filter, uh, you pick up way oh, okay. more of the night sky than hmm. Um, hmm. than what you would with a normal camera. Right. That's crazy. It is. It's, it's and like you can just send that to. There's obviously just dedicated. There's people. there's lots of places that do it. I, I think mostly in the states that are specialized. I, there's life pixel is one of them spencer's camera and 
they've done a bunch of stuff for um, like NASA. They've really? modified that's cameras pretty, for them. That's pretty pretty good recommendation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. So how long have you been doing this for? Like the uh, deep space? Uh, deep space. Um, it's actually been just over a year since I started. Uh, <laughs> since I took my first one. That's I, wild. Yeah. Like the first uh, quick, then. first image <laughs> of uh, of Orion that I took was uh, April 2020. I went out to Colchester Beach. Yeah. I'm um, one of the first times like I really used a star tracker too, and like as I was editing, I was like, man, this is the best image I've ever <laughs> taken. <laughs> Is it like it, I, but I was I was hooked like I think that night I was just like all right got to order that Sam Yang 135 millimeter lens because that's <laughs> on the way home that's like the next <laughs> day the next step oh, that's yeah, funny yeah I've been talking yeah, to you about uh, getting like uh, buying one of your old star trackers if you upgrade uh, yeah but like I, like I forgot I was going with this oh yeah so like I just started stacking photos like probably two years ago and just going to stacking in general is like I was blown away by that. And then now it's like the next step would be Star Tracker, I'd imagine. Yeah, Star Tracker is the next step where you take like a single two minute exposure and then, you know, say take maybe 10 of them and then just all the detail that you get in the Milky Way. So it's just, incredible. Just, just explain what a Star Tracker is because it. Oh, yeah, I tried. Yeah, I tried I, the one. I don't know if I, I, I. Did I. Did you listen to the astrophotography one or no? I think I only got part way through it. Oh, I think I think I these guys are talking garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <That's> probably. <laughs> these guys don't know what they're talking I'll let, about. I'll, yeah, I'll let you explain how the Astro or the Star Tracker works. But, uh, yeah, I'll let you go. You're on, up. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the uh, Star Tracker has to be aligned with Polaris, uh, the North Star, which uh, sits, like, just a little bit off from the uh, uh, axis of rotation from the Earth. So there's, uh, once you get aligned with that, the star tracker counteracts the rotation of the earth so if you're polar aligned properly you could if you're brave enough you can take like an hour long exposure just a single one yeah and if you're uh, like perfectly aligned no wind and all that the stars would still be pin sharp wow hmm. that's crazy that's, that's wild. so like when you have your uh, camera on just a tripod depending on the focal length uh, you know say you're using a 14 millimeter lens you'd probably be able to get like a 20 to 30 second exposure before uh, you get a little bit of star trailing. And that's the thing, a lot of our photos photos done before where it's a single exposure, it is you know, right between 20 and 30 seconds. And even at that, once you get to the higher end of that, you do start to see it's not as pin sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, the Star Tracker, it's motor, a motor that moves in the same speed or whatever as the Earth's rotation, right? Yeah. Uh, so. Like you say, then you can take long exposures. Remember the time you were talking about you were going to make one? I oh, got I got one uh, kind of 3D printed going. Just the barn door Oh, yeah, the style. barn door trackers. Yeah. Yeah, Is it a manual one or do you have a motor? I have, a, right? I have the uh, the Raspberry Pi and okay. all that. I was going to program for it, but uh, that was a winter project. Winter went by too quick. Mm. So next winter, I'll next continue winter? on. Yeah. But you'll probably bought one by then? Yeah, it sounds, sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I don't know, it's fun building it. It's like the barn door one's a pretty simple design. It's basically a, like a screw yeah. or a threaded rod, essentially, that just lifts a barn door at a certain rate. Yeah, I think you have to get, like, a certain, like, thread pitch, count or yeah. something oh, like yeah. that. A certain pitch. I forgot what it was. But I was able to, like, uh, I couldn't 3D print that because that's way too fine. But oh, I, yeah. I was able to do the, the gearing and everything. But I don't know. It's a, it's just a, something fun, but we'll see. Yeah. It's a whole new world to get into. Oh, right? absolutely. It's, it's cool. Like to take your first uh, astrophotography pictures, just use what you have. Yeah. You don't have to go out and buy an F 1.8. Like my first, I started out with just a kit lens. Yeah. I, it was on a micro four third. So it was like a 14 to 42 millimeter. I think it was like F four or something like that. And I, I was shocked when I was, uh, when I got my first image and I was yeah. like, holy crap. Even at like a 30 second exposure, even though you get star trailing, the amount of light that comes in, you're like, right. it's still super yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. So I, whenever I see people posting like the groups and all that, I'm just like, when they want to get into astrophotography and there's like, what should I buy? I always just say, use what you have. Yeah because it gets expensive yeah. real fast oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you, if you, and, if you uh, don't know if it's going to stick either right You're, yeah and that, that's what i say like you know make sure the passion is there before you drop any money on yeah it. yeah, yeah or if you buy really good stuff you know don't get into it 
You can sell it to me for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a really bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, you recommend people you just get your shopping list out? Yeah, you should probably get this, this, and this, and then uh, I'll buy it off if you don't get into it. Here's about ten grand worth of equipment. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is about any entry level. Uh, uh, mirrorless camera. Well, for sure, every mirrorless yeah. camera now you can buy. Any is, camera. I mean, even cell phones these days. Yeah, oh, are, yeah. Right? it's crazy. Like we, we they're we doing a the good job. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. I've done like Milky Way sh- like shots. You can see the Milky Way with a cell phone, but I mean, and no, nothing beats uh, beats the bigger sensor. Right. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Even even like a crop uh, crop sensor yeah. camera or yeah. uh, full frame. Just so. being able to do the manual controls to like thirty seconds is or longer is you. That's the biggest right. biggest thing. Yeah. And then, so part of it then is, is the, the, the post-processing, like you're starting to say, the stacking, because this isn't a, necessarily a single image. With the equipment, you can take longer single images, but you're still taking multiple images to make a final product, right? Yeah. So you use a Deep Sky. Is it Deep Sky uh, Stacker? Deep Sky Stacker is a, a great free program once you uh, start getting into it. There's Sequator, Sequator, I, I yeah. had no idea how it was. Half, half the people say it one way, the other half yeah. say it the other way. Tomato, tomato. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to come up with a third way. And then <laughs> when uh, when you want to get to like a lot of the more advanced uh, ones, there's uh, programs like PixInsight. I can't remember a lot of them uh, now, but I, I ended up uh, sucking it up and spending like 300 bucks on PixInsight. Oh, yeah. And just with their, whatever algorithms they have are incredible because just with their autos, I uh, basically like auto stretch the image to pull out more data was basically like the first hour of my editing oh, uh, really? that I would do on yeah. them. Wow. So like I got the trial and then I uh, went to, uh, and then after doing that, and it's like, holy crap, like <laughs> this will save me basically an hour, an right. hour per image of trying to get it to look a certain way. So by like, when you say stretching, what do you, what do you mean by stretching the image? Like, like when you look at the histogram of, oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. of the uh, picture. So it's bringing it, more, more information. Yeah. More a lot data. of times it's just like a little sliver. And then by the time you're done editing it, it goes from like this to, oh. you yeah. know, covering like up like most of Almost an HDR it. image essentially, right? Yeah. Same deal. Hmm. That's crazy. So do you use uh, like uh, star stacks and stuff like that as well, or for like more I, for like? Uh, I pretty much only do star stacks for um, uh, for star trail images, okay. and I don't know I've I've always loved time lapses. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's cool. When we were at that abandoned house uh, the other week, month, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> time flies way too quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we were there, I I just love doing. Uh, doing like the star trail like or i like doing it where it starts out as you see like the normal stars like they're pin sharp and then all of a sudden it just starts yeah uh, it yeah it starts cool. trailing I, I always like that effect but yeah. Yeah. i don't do it too much because i don't want all of my stuff to look the exact same <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the hardest part about it just getting up in the middle of the night to go shoot or what oh yeah <laughs> yeah because <laughs> yeah, we, we've yeah. planned it a few times i think and both of us are like you just sit on that couch at like 10 o'clock. We plan on getting out at like 11 or 12 and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it's always a mistake to be like, oh yeah, I'll just sit in bed for a few uh, minutes. Yeah. That's always the worst one where you just don't get up. You al- you're almost way better off just driving to location. Sit there for a few hours. Yeah, and then at least you're there. Yeah. You can even nap in the vehicle and away you go. It's easier for you to nap whenever you're in the van because it's got a bed. Eh? Yeah, true. I, I still haven't done that. For Sitting the in a small car is not. <laughs> yeah, the best yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, crazy. when we went to, to do the uh, uh, International Space Station right. transiting the moon, there, <laughs> how cold that was. That was pretty nippy. <laughs> that yeah. was pretty cold. Yeah, that is so worth it. That I, was. Well, that, cool. that, that, I think that, all that, of us started uh, <laughs> yeah. capturing like a little bit too late. Yeah, yeah definitely and too late. I, I, I was blown away that like me and you got it. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, we were so bummed out when we went home. Yeah, like, we were flicking through the pictures. No, no, no. No, like, I don't, yeah. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting, like, like I could probably, I think it was 8 megapixels, or right. pixels yeah, where yeah. I, like, zoomed in, and I was like, the international Yeah, you, you just see, pixels. like, a little dot that wasn't there yeah, in your yeah, last exactly. picture of the yeah. moon. Yeah. I would never have found it if you didn't post yours first, because then I knew where to look. I was like, oh, it could be in this little crater area. Yeah, well, that's the, whenever... <laughs> 
So when we shot it, but it's one that you're thinking, you look at your image, you go, oh, now nah, I just need to you know, change my focus slightly. You're going, when's this going to happen again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have forgotten, right? Yeah. The next time it happens or next time you go to shoot it. And uh, you're, you're, not, you're not going, same thing. You've only got that one. It's not, it's, a, it's not even two seconds, is it? I, 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 think I think you only have like seconds. a second and a half, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 So you got a second and a half and it only happens X amount of th- it's a time that you can go and shoot it. Yeah, so especially around here where water locked. So it's like you only, right. you have only Essex County or you can drive that yeah. way. Right. So, uh, and then it, like to have every, I've been, I've been kind of looking into it for the last couple of years and then, uh, just for the weather to line up right. and like everything to line up. Especially to, in uh, February yeah, in where a full moon too, we've been dealing with, uh, you know, months of cloud cover. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then just so happens on a one night. Yeah. It was a, it was a perfect night if it yeah. wasn't minus no, five. I just thought it was hilarious <laughs> that we're, we're all sitting, we're trying to pay attention to the time. And then it was you called it. Oh, hang on, there's a nine of it. All just firing all the cameras going firing on. Right? Just, yeah, uh, I, I couldn't even see it. Usually, it's pretty bright in the sky. You could see it right. like oh, yeah. going right. across, yeah. and then I don't know for some reason this time nobody could see it. And it's like it's I ball. think it's happening right now. Yeah. And then like, a... <laughs> what's the other like a lot of like SpaceX stuff. A lot. Of, or, I always call it SpaceX stuff. A lot of well, it's kind of SpaceX stuff. All the uh, Starlink stuff okay. now. A lot of, like we were trying to shoot that. Did you end up getting a, a shot of that the no. other night? No. No, I, I, I've had it a few times where there's a couple of good uh, sites to go to where it'll show you even, it'll even show you like a Google Street View yeah. uh-huh. and it overlays like constellations and all that and it shows you exactly where uh, I, it'll be from your location. And I was, I looked at the app and I was like looking up and I was like, should be directly overhead That's right a, now. I there should be there should be 120, 120 <laughs> satellites in a line going over. It was it and was I like I saw over St. Clair when I when I found it because like I seen one. It came like left of the moon and it's like they kept going like that. Like I, I, I could be I'm probably way wrong. It could have just been pure luck that it was like one random satellite and like oh, another yeah. random satellite. But like I, I got definitely a picture of some satellites. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was, uh, but like every form or every uh, like there's a. Great Lakes Aurora uh, Chasers or whatever. Are you, in, are you in that group at all on Facebook? No, I'm not. Yeah, you don't want to get disappointed anyway, because like then you'll be like everyone up north. You're like, oh wow, and insane <laughs> photos. And then, but uh, every day or every night, whenever there's like a chance of Aurora, everyone's like, uh, think it's aliens up there. I'm, oh, not, yeah. I'm not even exaggerating. Everyone thinks it's aliens when they see the SpaceX uh, or SpaceX the uh, Starlink, <laughs> Starlink, Starlink satellites. 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 I mean, they're through. SpaceX is the parent company. I know, I know. I launch know. by, I, launch by them, but. I'll, I'll I, right I won't. I won't give you a hard time <laughs> for that. <laughs> Just uh, whatever. No, that's what the, that's what I like to call them. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people are worried about the uh, satellites ruining astrophotography. Yeah. And then, but like, I, I then I heard Elon talking about it. He's he's, he's idiots. <laughs> yeah, he basically tell, told everyone he's idiots because uh, <laughs> that uh, it's. I don't know if it's uh, true or not. He might just be trying to pump up his own company. Who knows? Wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, something he would do ever. No, no he, he never tweets something <laughs> uh, no. that has he uh, was saying, gained for him. Yeah, <laughs> he was saying the only reason we see like the the trail of them is because they're not fully deployed yet. So it's like they're going into position, and then once they're fully deployed. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. Uh, I've never really seen them. I, After the trains kind of went yeah, by. Yeah, like, just the individual one when it's in position. Because right now there's one above us right now somewhere right oh, i'm sure like, there is because like people have i think at uh, this point he has like 1500 satellites yeah because people sky, around so us have say. starlink out here oh, okay so and uh, you were able to get it yeah, out at your place it. too yeah. so i can get uh, i just don't want to pay the 830 dollars or whatever it is to get a satellite right now yeah. when, when it's like mobile and it's like oh, here, yeah. here's your briefcase exactly and just go and around. you go anywhere i'm in but like yeah. I, don't know, I have fiber here so it's like yeah, exactly there's no point yeah, there's no point because it's i'm sure it's cheaper than yeah, uh, yeah. what starlink yeah. is yeah. yeah but it's pretty cool i mean like oh that's it is really yes. cool it's, a, it's way everything's going to go uh, yeah. eventually right so uh, there's uh, once the coverage is there and the satellites are all in orbit and the world is covered so i wonder if like uh you'd probably know kind of more about this because you're kind of in the field of the not so much telecommunications but i guess telecommunications right kind of i just pay attention to all that stuff so <laughs> <laughs> so like uh do you think like all like the companies like bell and all those guys are all worried about starlink at all like kind of taking over you'd think so i, I, I think they are a little bit um Cause I because they're they're not going to get a 100 bucks for five megabits right. anymore yeah. Yeah. when yeah. you can get their plan one day is like one gigabit yeah, yeah. not anywhere 130 dollars a month yeah. Yeah. and it's unlimited not you're locked to yeah. 100 gigs of usage and that's like a flip of the switch too like elon there can just be like oh everyone yeah. uh 
he could just undercut everyone and just be like, oh, oh cheap, cheap internet, yeah. for the, free internet yeah. for the world. And then this could be the... Uh, How is he going to fund Mars missions, though? I know. <laughs> <that's the thing. laughs> well, he uh, would have nothing to read about anymore. I know, I know their biggest their, their issue is cities at the minute, right? Because uh, anybody lives in any sort of apartment building or tower block mm-hmm. um, won't be able to get it. Like the top, yeah, They're, top, they're top not meant the for, like, high-density yeah, high areas. areas. Uh, yeah. It's more for, like, the uh, more remote communities yeah. or rural properties where... They're stuck with crap internet. Because like at, at the moment, it. they're like limited bandwidth or whatever each satellite. Right. So yeah. like you only have, I don't know what the number is, say like a 50 houses connected to that one satellite at a time. Versus like if you're in the city, you'd have like thousands of people right. connected at once. Yeah. I mean, obviously that could all change well, in the yeah. future extremely easily as well. But but the infrastructure is already there for like fiber in most cities. Yeah, exactly. It's not, but just it's again the competition ways is the. I guess, yeah, so that's like, the thing. Like I, I could definitely see them just going. Uh, no more competition, yeah. and then everyone just—that's it. <laughs> Got satellite Nothing. internet. Okay. Huh. So anything else that you you want to touch on? on oh, the have we mentioned or? the have we mentioned the solar eclipse? No, we well, have not. Well, <laughs> well see, well, the pro- problem is it's going to be after this. Yeah. But like, it's either we're going to be disappointed. So, or... What did you think of the solar eclipse this morning, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, uh, true. Yeah. All right, let's let's take two clips. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it was cloudy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we weren't really able to see anything, <laughs> <laughs> and borders being closed, so we can't really drive. That's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so the sec- That's, second right, clip. Now, now second clip. Yeah. It was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> My, oh. Yeah. It was Sick well worth getting up yeah. at four in the morning to go check out. Oh, that's funny. And yeah. it'll, it'll probably be cloudy. That's usually how it goes. Well, it's, I think it's going to be stormy at the end, yeah. middle of half but the next week. Did you see the logo? They gave you the logo of a sun, a storm cloud, rain, and lightning. Everything. The whole you're, lot? You, you're just missing the snow. Uh, probably the, thunder, thunder, <laughs> snow. thunder snow. Uh, yeah, well, that's so this podcast will be released the evening of it, so we're not exactly sure. Um, yeah, so uh, right at sunrise, uh, it's going to be like right at the new moon so the moon's going to be directly in front of the sun for some places i think closer to thunder bay and like mm. more up north but so they have um, totality in thunder bay yeah really uh, thunder bay was it somewhere you gonna go along there? lake superior it's only 14 hours <laughs> <laughs> but yeah even in windsor it's going to be uh, probably about like 60 percent or so coverage so as soon as the sun rises part of it's going to be blocked Hmm. by the moon have you experienced uh one yet a full not at all like during the no i've never seen totality i'm really excited for the one in 2024 yeah. probably going to be cloudy but oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a one day you can guarantee it's going to be cloudy nick has this idea of we should go to Pili Island. no 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 i, I scratched that idea oh, you scratched it then <laughs> well it's a good idea if like the weather it's, looks yeah, good because you can't go in it you're locked you're, you're locked if you go there you better have yeah a boat. if, if <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah we just want to have a couple hours of leeway depending yeah, to yeah. see like you know, if there was going to be a break in the clouds yeah. two hours south of us, uh, yeah. if the border ever opens right. up. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make a run for it. It's only three years from now, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, you got to plan for these things, eh? Look, then, at the, look at the farmer's almanac. Yeah. See what the weather's going to be like. Oh, yeah. But uh, then the, uh, it's all, it's like basically scraping Lake Erie coast, right? Or is, does it go, I, I forgot the path. I don't know. Yeah, I, know I know totality um, was like dead center on pretty well the Pilei, yeah, totality is going to be, I think, in Essex County, it's probably going to be from, like, Colchester or something, and then going to cut into, like, Leamington, where, like, the actual city of Windsor and even, like, the town of Essex is, uh, they're not going to be in totality. They might be, like, 98%, but it's still not totality. Yeah, right. yeah if anyone, like, if you don't know what totality means, by the way, it's, like, like, when the moon is completely covering the sun, and that's, like, it's, I've experienced it once, and it's, like, by far the craziest thing you will and you ever don't see. Don't look life. at it. Yeah, yeah, but it's <laughs> without like, the eclipse glasses. But it's like it's literally it's almost as dark as it is right now, in the middle of the day, in the middle of the day. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's I, like you I see, can't wait for you can, right. it's, it's insane. I can't wait for it to, you know, if I can, I, if I can get a picture of like say the Milky Way during the daytime or yeah. something oh, like yeah. that, yeah. that would be, be incredible. It's, it's like no, oh, I don't know if you get the Milky Way. <laughs> It'd be like I don't know, like but blue don't, hour. Don't like some stars. Uh, yeah, the you, brighter you stars. You see stars come in the middle of the night, and it's uh, when we went. It was super crazy because it's in the states, so they had fighter jets uh, chasing it. So like oh, it, during totality, awesome. and, and then you'd have like the sonic boom of like jets flying mm-hmm. over, like following <laughs> it. It was wild, and even like the the, oh, it's so weird. The whole thing's so weird. The wind would stop, and like the birds Animals, and everything would uh, stop. Uh, like everything. Yeah, I've heard like, like as soon as that happens just Dead. everything 
basically the world quiets down. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing ever, and it's the cool. It's by far the one experience that, like, if you have a chance to do it, you got to do it because it's nuts. So that's yeah. something to look forward to. Put it in your calendars. Yeah. Uh, when is it? What, what month in 2024? Uh, April 2024, I believe. April? You don't remember the day and the time? <laughs> Let me guess. April 24th, 2024. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Put that in your diary. It may not be it, but, you know. But we'll put, it, I'll put it across the screen. Well, yeah, we'll put it across the screen because Nick will go and do some fact checking. <laughs> he can put that up on the screen, but uh, certainly... You'll probably forget about it, but if you put it with your smartphones now, you put it in, you'll have forgotten about it, but it'll come and it'll give you a reminder. I'm sure there's going to be tons of articles in oh, the, yeah. the weeks leading up to T-shirts for sale and yeah. glasses. I, and I survive the to- yeah. I survived totality yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, when we went to the States, we went to Kentucky, and I forgot the main town where it, uh, like totality was. It had like the longest the, like the longest totality, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> I don't know. Is that the right terminology yeah, for it? Sure. I don't know. But I don't like, know, but I, I'm sure your point got across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> stop rambling. <Hope> so. <laughs> but, like, the amount of people that were there is nuts. Like, uh, you couldn't even buy gas. All the gas stations were, like, out of gas. Like, there's people camped out on these, <laughs> oh, yeah. like, side of freeways and tents and stuff. It was, it was, it was nuts. That's I don't cool. know. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people have uh, Peely Island uh, I think up so to too. capacity. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Say, oh. And then, like, Imagine you go to Peely Island and you have one cloud that's coming over. You see it coming all day, <laughs> and you're like, "We gotta wait four hours for the ferry." Who <laughs> <laughs> like, just swim? Who just kill you all day? And, you know, no, oh, that'd be the worst. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where else we could go. I think it, I think it and does. Like, Niagara Falls, I think, gets it too. Yeah, I think it is I, the whole coast of Lake Erie. I'm pretty sure, yeah, roughly. Yeah, pretty sure Lake Erie, and then a little bit into Ohio, maybe. Yeah. The, we'll plan we'll it plan out. It. Yeah, 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 we'll do, we'll do a pod, We'll do a special for the podcast. That would be a cool one. Yeah. That'd be a, a, broadcasting the dark. Yeah. We've already done the most southern Canadian yeah. podcast yeah. that we know of. I think we should do that. We should, uh, like, have you been to the, like, I've been most southern park. Have you been down there, like, the east, because I've been to the most eastern one as well, in Newfoundland, uh, Signal Point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't been. You haven't that, been there, no, that was, we were planning on doing it this year, but can't so, see that so happening. We should do the pod, we should plan, we'll, we'll fly out. The podcast to the most northern national northern park alert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. It's probably uh, got nine feet of snow there right now. <laughs> well, wait, there's six feet, whatever. You know. Yeah, we wait till it go down to six feet. Yeah, that uh, would be cool. And then the most western. Yeah, What's the most western. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's probably, probably up near Alaska. On, uh, It'd be like BC, but Alaska yeah. top, right? Because it kind of curves into like the bay. Right. That's What's the true. bay called there again? Um, Prince John. Prince. Prince Rupert's like Prince the, Rupert or but like the bay, like where they do all like the lobster fishing show there. Damn. Well, you, you can put that up on the screen <laughs> as well a, if you ever work at it. I hate it when things like are almost there, almost clicked in, <laughs> and they just don't click in. Yeah. Oh, what is it called? Oh, whatever. Continue yeah. anyway, on. It'll yeah. come so, to me. It'll come. Anyway, back to the, the, the <laughs> deep deep sky stuff. So, is there anything else that you you feel that you should point out to people uh, who are <laughs> wanting to get interested in this or or how, how like? Do you find it addicting? Is it like... Oh, it's good? definitely addicting. I've lost so much sleep over <laughs> uh, over this. There's been nights where uh, I go out for an entire night, get home at 6 in the morning, get ready for a 12-hour shift at work, and go nice. <laughs> basically yeah. just Going on. drag my feet all yeah. day, make okay. sure my performance at work is still... It's- Adequate. Adequate. No, 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 no. I make sure perform is still top notch. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Uh, yeah. That's good. So hopefully the employers are watching us to see that uh, how, how, how Great dedicated employee. you are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I've enjoyed it. I think it's informative. It's, yeah. I, I'm not as passionate. I, I like doing the, the, the normal sky stuff. The reason, and the only reason I wouldn't want to get into it more is because I wouldn't want to spend the money on it. I'll just scare myself. Um, to go that far well, and the process and thing. How, long, how long does it take you to process some of these images sometimes I spend like a good three four hours processing a single image That's so funny. you know not only did I dedicate like four hours in the field right. shooting it yeah. I also dedicate four hours yeah, uh, four hours processing an image <laughs> I mean and I'm still like more amateur at it too right. so you know some people spend 40 hours shooting an image and spend just as much time processing right. because they they know like exactly what to do for things yeah. and yeah. so many little things where uh, and like blending images together can you make that. like almost like photoshop actions or whatever for that uh, software you can do like that yeah there's there's lots of companies that have uh, released like 
action presets basically uh, mm. where you know some of them might be enhanced nebula light reduced light pollution so it just like removes some of the like yellow tint or something right. to it hmm. and you also have that one filter that was really cool that uh starburst filter or the, yeah it's a uh, it's made by case filters uh, with alan wallace on youtube he's oh, yeah, yeah. a big astro guy there right yeah he's a big astro guy uh, it's a star glow filter yeah. where a lot of them i uh, i guess they weren't good enough for him <laughs> like they, they didn't give the effect exact effect that he wanted or it may have like made some of the colors of the stars not as good or something like yeah. that so he worked with them and kind of fine-tuned it oh. and it it does add a really cool effect. Yeah. It yeah. makes all like the brighter constellations stick out and everything too. Yeah, it's yeah. it's wild. It's it's that's the coolest part about astrophotography too. Is like the the editing and different technical things you can do with like different filters right. and. Yeah. There, there's just so much to it. Never ends. It, I don't it's, think it never ends. It's one of yeah. those rabbit holes that you oh, just yeah. get yourself into, and then. And the technology <laughs> gets like I think I I, I, don't, I could be wrong here, but like compared to like DSLRs and mirrorless, I, I would imagine technology with that kind of stuff advances pretty damn quick compared to like mirrorless or is it it's kind of been the same a lot of them use like uh, pretty Older similar sensors, sensors. Uh, like the camera that's back there has a sony some some kind of sensor in it hmm. uh, which could be the exact same that's in i uh, say like i think nikon uses uh, sony sensors yeah. or it could be the the exact same that's in like a different nikon camera yeah huh. it's just no no filters in front of it uh, for the camera to be able to pick up all the light, pick up all the uh, red hydrogen alpha emissions. Um, and one of the things we never brushed up on was, um, or touched on was, uh, this mount has a guide camera on it. So a separate camera hmm. that's uh, just for sending the ever so slightest corrections to the mount. Wow. If it detects uh, the mounts like moving a little bit more than it should or a little bit less it'll uh, send the corrections to it so that's that's what gets you uh, pinch like yeah. five minute exposures uh, much easier nice. that's great so, how, how heavy is that uh the mount itself i've never looked up the weight but <laughs> i i swear it's like 50 pounds <laughs> so, yeah so so really uh, the the round it all up if you want to spend a lot of money <laughs> a lot of time shooting and a lot of time processing deep sky photography is for you like I've, I've, somebody, <laughs> absolutely <if you're> <laughs> and don't tell your girlfriend or your wife how much everything costs so got, my yeah. girlfriend a, has asked me a few times She's better like, off not knowing. How, how much is a how much does all this cost Cheaper just or, to buy how much was your camera how much was there? this and it was like <laughs> do you really want to know so really, and i just what, leave it at that <laughs> what, what do you want to tell her is like like my photography it's best kept in the dark <laughs> I've never used that. I, next time, uh, yeah. next time I'll have to use that one. So I think we'll, we'll wrap it up now. But I think if we can, I think we should take an image here. Uh, you can set up or something if you want. It's pretty dark now. Are uh, you able to take a quick picture with that, or is it? Like a big <laughs> bring set? the battery. It's oh. just for show right now. <laughs> Shh, don't say that. No, no, no so, we'll get a so quick we're picture. A quick picture. Yeah. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll just post any picture, right? Yeah, we'll just yeah. say we'll take it right now. But it is. It's, it's a clear night. Um, and we'll listen. We'll have some of Josh's picture. And if you're not going to get into it, we're going to post all the information. You can follow Josh on uh, Facebook and Instagram. It's your main social media, right? Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll post the links for that there, and you can follow him. But like his pictures are phenomenal. Realistically, though, just to get out there quickly, like a quick cheap setup would be like what fifteen hundred bucks. Like a cheap star tracker is what three hundred bucks. Yeah. So uh, like if one of the one of the main star trackers uh, that people use is the Skywatcher Star Adventure. If you get the pack, that has pretty much everything included. I think they're about 500-ish Canadian, so okay. like 100 US. So um, you're more $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you can use your existing camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, because at that point, like the uh, how wide the aperture is on your lens doesn't matter as much. Right. But it's still more beneficial to have one that soaks up more light. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, thank you for coming yeah, along. You. We appreciate yeah, it. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, it's, it's been great. So I'll just say that's a good night from Nick. Good night from Donnie. Good night. Good night. And I guess I'm just going to go off into the field and take some pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. Farewell. <laughs>